Light was designed naturally to exercise authority and dominion. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible said God made two great lights. The greater light ruled the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And so what you will find there is intrinsic and inherent with light is the power for rulership. Everywhere light comes, rulership is naturally activated because that is part of light's DNA. Light does not know how to do anything other than ruling. This room is a very dark room. This room we are in now. If you put off this light, it won't take a second before darkness takes over. The reason darkness is not here is not because it's cooperating with the light. It's because the light is bullying it out. If you take this light out, this darkness will come in like a hungry tiger. And so when light comes into your life, no matter how ferocious darkness is, it will count for nothing. In fact, in John chapter 1 verse 4, it said the light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehends it not. Two things you will notice there is that light deliberately hides its glory in light. Where light displays its glory is in darkness. So light is looking for darkness in order to showcase its supremacy. It said it's in darkness that light shines. Light does not shine in light. Light only shines in darkness. And the second thing he said is that it is not built into darkness to have the power to resist light. He said the darkness comprehended it not. And so any area of your life that you are failing to exercise authority is actually not an issue of circumstance. It's a revelation of darkness in your life. Every area you struggle is actually a revelation of the absence of light. So instead of facing that challenge, go and get light. The moment you get light, that challenge is already built to understand the supremacy of light. That if light show up, the challenge on its own will work out. So your problem is not the mountain. Your problem is the lack of light in your life. The question is, how do you apprehend light? In the kingdom, you apprehend light by seeing. Light in the kingdom is not a ray. The Bible said, the eyes of a man is the light of his body. So when you want to find out the measure and the expression of light in a man's life, find out what he's seeing. That's why the devil is in the business of blinding men. Because if you are blind, the presence of the ray counts for nothing. So the actual light is actually your ability to see, not the ray of light. So in the spirit, a man has light when he can see. If you cannot see, you don't have light. Even if there was a ray of light there, you are in darkness. Your seeability in the spirit is your light. And if you cannot see, you are already in darkness. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, Paul was speaking. He said, it is by seeing. No, he said, the reason we are ostracized from the commonwealth of Israel is not because the wealth is not available. He says, it's because our understandings have been darkened. That means even if God brings everything you ever need, you can't possess it. Because your understanding is darkened. And so a man without light is separated from the heritage of God and is a slave of the devil. That's why he can never exercise authority. How do you activate the sight? Number one is by praying. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 and 18. It says, for this cause, I pray for the church that is in Ephesus, that God may grant unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So the way you activate the spirit of wisdom and revelation is by praying consciously for it. There are many people who don't know that they need to kneel down and ask God, give me understanding. The psalmist was praying, he said, give me understanding and I shall live. Your major prayer is not God, give me a breakthrough. Your major prayer should be God, open my eyes, let me see. God, open my understanding. Let me see wondrous things out of thy law. If you don't pray consciously for your eyes to be open, even the gospel will keep you blind. 
He said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom are blinded. You will think if somebody hears the gospel, will naturally hear. No. What opens the eyes of men is to consciously pray for eyes that see. And so somebody who wants to really begin to walk in authority needs to sit down properly and tell the Lord, remove the scales from my eyes. Cause my eyes to begin to see. Did you not see Paul, the apostle? He was blind. The Bible said Ananias came to him, laid hands on him, and as he prayed for him, he said the scale fell off his eyes and his eyes opened. When we tell believers to pray all kinds of prayer, they think it's just religion. Prayer is not religion. There are many things prayer do for you or does for you and in you that is beyond what you are asking for. That's why most of you here, you receive that inspiration for your business. Either when you were fasting or praying. It was already there, but you couldn't see it. What the prayer did was to open your eyes. Because what you call inspiration is eyes that see. A man with open eyes is a man that prays. Because the fastest thing to take blindness off a man's eyes is prayer. Many times, find out people who are confused, they don't pray. They are just looking for somebody to hold their hands and say, Kai. God is telling me this. God is telling me that. They are looking for the easy way out. And so the devil will heap scales on their eyes. Great and mighty destinies will not be realized because eyes are blinded. And there is a realm you will get to. If your eyes are open, you will be walking and you will know what to do. The Bible spoke concerning Jesus. He said himself knew what he should do. I pray for you this evening. Every scale blinding your eyes by the power of the Holy Ghost, they fall off tonight. Amen. Authority is a function of light and light is a function of sight. In Job 29 from verse 3, it says, I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. He said, by light, I walked through darkness. Our problem is not darkness. Our problem is the absence of light. When you carry light, the situations that pull men down are the situations that glorify you. As I'm teaching now, many will hear, but they will still not pray. We will come for prayer meeting and be dragging them to pray. Three hours, they will still not pray. They will not come and meet you and tell you they had a dream. How do you think I will know that dream? Did they tell you that Part of apostolic package is interpretation of dream. Somebody will pray three hours. When they finish, they still come to you and say, I don't know what is happening to my job. Have you searched in the spirit? It is the same eyes you have that I have. And I'm not able to address that problem because I'm an apostle. I'm able to address it because I know how. And the how is to pray for your understanding to be enlightened. And if you will take up or make up your mind to begin to explore light in the place of prayer you'll be shocked the level of understanding you will walk into every problem men see you will see an answer to a generation every crisis men see you will see an answer to a generation the difference between the ruler and the beggar is the light that is available to them and so the problem is not the darkness the problem is you don't have light the moment you have light darkness becomes your platform because it is in darkness that light shines. In the same vein, it is in darkness that the believer is glorified. But too many believers are walking in darkness. And the reason is because they are not given to prayer. A man who does not pray will be blind. Because what takes that scale off your eyes is to bow your knees in prayer and ask the God of light to open your understanding. He said, if anyone lacks wisdom, which is also light, he said, let him ask of God that giveth liberally and unbraided not. Why do you think we counsel people against worldliness? One of the things worldliness does is to blind you. And the devil knows. Believers are not aware that the greatest point of attack in their life is their spiritual eyes. You can be as strong as a Samson. If your eyes are gorged out, you are finished. And so there are many mighty destinies that their eyes are being plucked out on a daily basis through worldliness. So you find a man with all the strength 
but he's being mocked daily because when the devil plucks out your eyes the next thing he does is to mock you and you know that you should be an answer to your generation but you can't tell why you have been reduced to an object of mockery your eyes have been gouged out the attack on our spiritual eyes are many and if there is one thing we must do is to guard it don't let anything blind you today they wake up they are tearing every gene you are tearing gene they wake up they are sagging trouser to this place you are sagging it you say oh boy it's fashion what is happening seven years ago or eight years ago when fubu was raining fubu <laughs> hey one trouser is like skirt and then you see every young man on the street man what's happening man and then timberland the jeans alone is really fubu then they add timberland on it then they now sack it and now fold the jeans and hang it on top and they are moving like this as if they are carrying bricks they don't know that these things are spiritual dynamics they think it's fashion after a few years they move from one extreme to another to show you that these things are mind control mechanisms they move from fubu jeans overnight to pencil jeans and the same people that were wearing baggy suddenly began to wear jeans that is as tight as a balloon some people are walking their legs like this because the jean is so tight they can't even sit well and they think they like it you that three years ago you love the bogus jeans three years later you love a tight jean and you think it's about like you don't know these are mind control mechanisms they are they are shifting the minds of a generation and as they move from there they began to tear every jean and you find people walking like mad people on the street and they say it's fashion who told you it's fashion princes that rule civilizations are manipulating the source of men and they think it's fashion and the same thing is applied even in church today somebody comes that is singing is dancing like a superstar and they say it's the new dance step where did they pick it from you don't know these things are acts of worship that's why the more they are growing in their music career the more godless they become the things they pursued when they were seeking God, they've lost all of them. Because they become worshippers of demons. If we lift up hands and the Bible calls it worship, who told you all those dance steps you are dancing? It's not worship. And they say they are music ministers. Don't let any superstar come and pollute your atmosphere because he is popular. Popularity is not authority. Even madmen are popular. It is the blindness of this age. Worldliness. And that's why men no longer have authority. You are current with every worldly trend. And then you show up in church because you think you speak polished English. Demons will hear it. <laughs> The way they will begin with you is to strike you with leprosy or paralysis. Just to show the world that you don't know what you are doing. Do you know the spirits? They are vicious, but they are intelligent. The way we build authority is by safeguarding our eyes. And your eyes are safeguarded when you give it only to purity. Job said, I vowed that my eyes will not look upon the virgins. No wonder he had so much power with God. You can quote 1,000 scripture. It doesn't mean you have light. Because God will not give you based on the scripture you quote. He said, as far as your eyes can see, that's what I'm committed to give you. If you can't see, you can't have. And the devil knows it's a law in the spirit. That even if God wants to give you, God is only mandated to give you as far as your eyes can see. So if the devil wants to deal with you, he will pluck out your eyes and allow you with religion. Authority is by light. And light is based on what you can see. I can assure you that many people here, they have not seen anything from the realm of God in a long time. Number four. Authority by obedience. 
I beg you, hear these things and apply them. Your life will depend on it. The lives of your children will depend on it. This is not cliche. I know where I was and I know where I am now. And I also know where I'm going. I can tell you a thousand and one times I prefer where I am now than where I was. And I don't plan going back to where I was. What I'm telling you is why your children will live a better life. Even the devil knows that if it's in this life, my children will live as kings. The devil knows. Because of how much light I've acquired. Even the devil knows they will never pray for money. They will never pray for food. They will never pray for a good life. If they surrender it to serve God, it will be willfully. Because of light. What I'm teaching you, it will determine the quality of your existence. Don't waste your destiny depending on another man. Sort out realities for yourself. Who told you another man can be a guarantee for your destiny just because he's called your pastor? Ah. Oh. People need understanding. People need understanding. Your pastor may love you, but he's a man. He can't even do for you what he will do for his biological children. And even to his biological children, he's not guaranteed enough. Meanwhile, he will do for his children more than he will do for you. And then you risk your existence. Depending on him, the best thing he can do for you are the sets of truths he gives you. Apply it and change the quality of your life. They say fast, they won't fast. Pray, they won't pray. Go for evangelism, they won't go. Give, they won't give. Even when we say God prosper you, not everybody receives at the same level. If you go to a place where they make financial decree and the testimony is rapid, it's because most of them are covenant practitioners. Because they engage the covenant, their faith is open to receive. And because they engage the covenant, it becomes easy for God to walk through them. You don't give, you don't tithe, you don't give offering, you don't give any form of giving. They say this week you will prosper. You jump and hug the ceiling. The man who gives doesn't need to shout as much as you are shouting. But his faith has already conquered it. People don't know truth. And they think God is a God of evolution. That you do it over and over does not mean there's power in it. It's not evolution. God is a God of creation. You know it, you do it, it works. You don't know it, do it a million times, it won't work. Authority comes by light. He said the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He said casting down imaginations. Every high standing thing that opposes itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity all things to the obedience of Christ. And he said when your obedience is fulfilled, then... So there's an authority that comes upon you when your obedience is fulfilled. In Isaiah 1 19, it says, if you'll be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. There are many people who are willing, but they are not obedient. And no matter how willing you are, if you are not obedient, you can never eat the good of the land. The good of the land is tied to willingness and obedience. God was speaking through Samuel to Saul. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 22, it said, does God delight so much in sacrifices than he does to obedience. He said to obey is better than sacrifice. To hack him than the fat of rams. When a man begins to obey a spirit or the laws of a spirit or the word of a spirit, he is proving to that spirit that is dependable. That's when that spirit can confer authority to that man. We are a rebellious generation. Some are rebellious in terms of sin and some are rebellious in terms of refusing to comply with the things of God. God gives you a thousand and one instructions. You violate all of them. And then you come back. You want to deceive God. The ancient of days. Don't you think your wisdom is too myopic to try to outsmart him? To obey is better than sacrifice. There is a power you get into when you start obeying God. There's an authority level you step into when you start obeying God. When God wants to help people, he begins to warn them against rebellion. In Psalm 40, verse 6 to 7, he said, see what the Bible said, or Jeremiah 11, verse 7, he said, for I solemnly warned your fathers 
when I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, warning them persistently, even to this day, to obey my voice. Because God's guarantee is tied to your obedience. His faithfulness will never be compromised. But if your obedience is compromised, then he can't guarantee you. So the fourth kind of authority that a man can command is authority through obedience. Hear me, brothers and sisters. If you are not a covenant practitioner, it will be difficult for you to prosper by kingdom prosperity standards. That obedience is first of all a sign that you believe the whole subject. If you are not obedient in covenant practice, you don't have faith to receive by prophecy. Because your obedience is a testimony that this whole package, you believe in it. You can't mock God. The devil understands this. The devil will not come to tell you that what God promised you is a lie. He knows that you believe it too much to accept that deceit. But what the devil will do is that he will make you disobey God. If you disobey God, God is true. His promises are true. But in your life, it will not be true. You want to live the invincible realm of dimension of life. It's tied to obedience. I tell people, there are no secrets in this kingdom. People only refuse to follow what God says. The truth of God is in black and white. He said it is given unto you to know the secrets of the kingdom. There are no secrets anywhere. They say pray, you don't pray. They say give, you don't give. They say fast, you don't fast. Go out to win souls, you don't go out. And you are hoping that something will happen. Don't you ask those who are experiencing it, is it just happening by fluke? No! There's something they are doing. If you do it, it will happen to you. Unless you want to leave the kingdom of light and go to darkness. And so obedience is the fourth thing that confess authority. The higher the obedience, the higher the authority. The weaker the obedience, the weaker the authority. It's not all the time you exercise authority by feeling. The last meeting I went for in Ghana, after I finished sharing, I was so tired. I almost fainted on the altar. I now went and sat down. I said, now God, we impart people. And people looked at me while you are sitting. You don't need to charge for things to happen. If your obedience is intact, you can wake up from sleep and make a declaration and sleep again. It will happen. It's people who don't know authority that think it's always about a feeling. So they are waiting to start charging. When they are charging like this, then they now start making declaration. A man of authority can stroll in and say, what is happening? Say, he's dying. Say, no, I refuse. He didn't even say in the name of Jesus, no, I refuse. And he will walk away. And the person will still be doing as if he's dead. When he finishes, he will wake up. He won't even turn back. You shall not die. And he's going. The person is still struggling with death. He won't answer. After 10 minutes, they will run and say, the person is back to life. Did you not read about Jesus? When he came, the child that was deaf and dumb, come out of him. The spirit is throwing the child everywhere. If it is us, gymnastic will begin. Come out! Come out! Jesus said once, and once is enough. Even though the spirit was dragging him everywhere, he has gone. Whether the spirit likes it or not, the spirit will obey. A man in authority is talking. And after a while, the spirit left. Authority. I sat down. I said, Lord, touch them. Let 24 people come under a new season. They were packing them like dead men. If you don't build this authority, a day will come when you will not sense charisma. A day will come when you will not sense the excitement. You can go to certain places, the heaven will be shot. All you will invoke is your obedience. Everything you know to do will not be working, but you will remember. Did you not read about the prophet Hezekiah, the king? When the prophet came to tell him you shall die, he went back and told God, I've obeyed you. I've kept all your laws. I've done everything you asked me to do with a perfect heart. And God sent the prophet before he went out of the compound. He said, go back and tell him. I've added 15 years to his life. When you want to see through authority, brother, beyond charisma, build your obedience. You will be shocked. The things you will say casually will still happen. In fact, God will begin to train you not to talk carelessly. Because he will no longer know whether you are cracking a joke or not. If Buhari comes to public TV, television, national television now, and jokes that Monday is public holiday, hope you know whether it's a joke or not, nobody will go to work. That's the level of authority that obedience brings. That everything you say becomes a law in the spirit. And this is what God is calling believers to. 
But our disobedience and disloyalty is too much to risk us with authority. 